Brian, we're down here at Rodney Parade. Of course, a lot of the hard work's happened already up at the centre of Sporting Excellent Ashford of Manic. Can you talk us a little bit through pre-season? Yep. Um, so the boys have gone through sort of a, an eight-week sort of conditioning window, really, where the first four weeks we're, we're into sort of big strength emphasis, picking up on individual sort of strengths and weaknesses we picked up from sort of last year's data set and obviously our pre-season testing, then trying to give them a sort of full spectrum of... Uh, strengths and repeatability uh, drills and sessions to, to alleviate where, where their weaknesses are really. I imagine there's a lot of gym work in there. What is the sort of day-to-day -day bread and butter that the guys have to go through during those early weeks to get themselves back up to speed? Well, with the sort of conditioning emphasis within the, within the gym, uh, we look at resistance stuff. Uh, it fluctuates from individual to individual, but a big strength emphasis. So, you know, they'll shift sort of a decent weight, which is ramped up through a four-week block normally and we get a deload week and then we go into another four week block so the rep ranges fluctuate per individual like front row guys for example you know they'll be working off sort of five to three reps which in a big strength window um, so your squats your deadlifts um, mostly strength and emphasis on, on, on most of that get a bit more speed power emphasis with the backs obviously because that comes into their game a little bit more but we just pull off a lot of data from the GPS and uh, you know where the guys tested at just to see where we can make vast improvements with those individuals. And looking at this season's pre-seasons and last season, what's the very latest in, in technology and theory around pre-season? What are you doing now that you maybe weren't doing before? I think with all the scientific data out there really, it's just um, being careful around um, what the game's actually given us. So GPS helps uh, give us you know, where that stimulus is, what repeatability the guys need, how far they need to sprint, how quickly they need to sprint. So the physical demands of the game are far more evident to us now. So with that then obviously we condition our training in around what that individual person or position needs and um, that's getting more and more sort of tactful shall we say with uh, where we place our condition and emphasis for that individual. So some people may do a high end sprints where props for example may not sprint more than sort of 10 metres within a game but they'll repeat that vast amount of time so they've got to be able to be decent in acceleration profile and then they've got to be able to the ability to repeat that within how many demands are within that, within that individual game. And I know for yourself and your team, the sports science doesn't stop just at the training, the strength and conditioning. There's quite a lot of emphasis on diet and nutrition. What are the guys eating during this, this block to keep them able to, uh, to train each day? Lots. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's, uh, we, we work closely with um, John Williams, uh, PAS, and uh, he gives us sort of dietary needs of uh, each individual and obviously body fat measurements and lean mass measurements and we're looking to increase that in, in some individuals more than others. So we just make sure that they're getting the right protein intake, the right carbohydrate intake to fuel them for the training. And then recovery is paramount really in pre-season because they have heavy days day after day. So we just have to make sure that they've got enough fuel within the body to then give them that, that energy first of all and then we talk about protein being sort of the resynthesis of muscle fibre so we need to make sure they're high in protein as well so they've got enough in the system to, to aid what we are giving them physically. And if I, if I put you on the spot and ask you for a couple of players that had really impressed during pre-season not only in what they were doing but how they motivated the rest of the team in the gym who would you pick out of that squad of players? Oh there's good band across the board when you come to uh, sort of uh, gym based stuff we normally label sort of uh, guys within in racks so they lift within a rack which means like all the props normally stick in one rack and lift together which gets really sort of edgy and competitive when it comes to shifting big numbers so I couldn't really pick out sort of one individual but I could probably pick out groups of individual I get far more uh, far more feisty about numbers and, and get competitive in and around spot your deads and your cleans etc then the backs are a little bit more speed emphasis so then they get competitive when it comes to the 10 meter times and their 40 meter sprints and what the velocity is coming off the GPS. So getting that competitive edge within the sessions gives us something different and keeps them active and really motivated really. We saw the example of that when Dragons TV came down and captured the strongman competition. I know as well as that, you took the guys off site and presumably with a view to, to freshening up the training, but also a bit of team building and a bit of motivation in there. Talk to us about a couple of the trips that you guys made during pre-season. Yeah, I think we'll, you know, we have big discussions in and around the structure of pre-season and what we do with the guys, and they get a lot of time within the gym rest of Manuk and on the field there doing a lot of running-based drills and a lot of sort of anaerobic games and all the rest of it. And it's nice then to put teams within teams to get that competitive edge, as we just mentioned, um, but take them off-site for a different environment, different emphasis. So 
couple of things we've done this year is uh, Newport MMA have housed us for a Saturday morning. We've got some competitive wrestling stuff which crosses over into the contact area and tackle etc. So that was, that was beneficial plus a bit of fun on the side. Then uh, we've done the sort of in-house strongman at Restaurant Monarch which was again, you know, sort of really competitive but also lined with a bit of fun in terms of around some uh, some physical bouts on truck pulling and uh, Atlas Stones and sort of bits and bobs that you see on the World's Strongest Man etc. We just try to replicate those. Not so much up, up the weights but not far off with some of our bigger guys to be honest. But uh, the other one well, then we went up to North Wales for a couple of days which is really good sort of you know to travel with everybody and let everybody get to know each other and we went on zip wires up there. It's, it's just again sort of different emphasis, different environment, challenging the guys uh, within a few different things and a bit of a fun element as well. Just lastly on that zip line, obviously you spent a hard eight, ten weeks getting the players built up and ready for professional rugby. Did you damage any of them with the psychology of asking them to jump off that zip line? No, only James Benjamin. <laughs> he failed off the second one and uh, was asked by um, the guy over the radio, oh, you need to get come and picked up in a minibus. And they said, um, has he got his parents with him? And I said, no, he's 25 years old, so he can uh, drop down in the minibus on his own. So. <laughs>